Good night, St. Lucia, and good night to all the St. Lucians in the diaspora. Welcome again to another hot episode of Keeping It Real, right here on Hot 7 TV. I'm Norbert Williams, your faithful host. And of course, getting right into the scheme of things, I'd like to say a special good night to all the fans of Keeping It Real, those of you out there who walk up to me every day around the city and around St. Lucia. Thank you so very much for being ardent fans of the show and I appreciate all your encouragement. And of course, I can never forget the fans of Keeping It Real in the diaspora in the US, New York City, Brooklyn. Good night, how are you doing? And of course, in Boston, Massachusetts, Hartford, Connecticut, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, the DMV, you know, Washington, D.C., Maryland, Virginia area, Florida, Miami, Atlanta, Georgia, Chi-Town. If you're there, you know who you are. Uh, California, and of course, the special fans in London, England, in London, who stay up late, late, what, after one over there in the morning, and you're listening. Just got a message a while ago. We're watching. So thank you so much for joining Keeping It Real tonight. And what a week it's been, or, well, a week since the last show. I'd like to say a special good night to all the viewers out there in ancillary canneries. And of course, I know I haven't mentioned it, but deserving of all the credit and attention we can give them, a special good night to all the police officers, the policemen and women who work so hard to keep us safe. I'm shouting out the police. Good night to the police officers out there. I got you. So, <laughs> I was at home on Saturday. You know, chilling, the weekend kind of thing, you know, relaxing, chillaxing. Then all of a sudden I started getting um, messages. My phone started going off. What can it be this time? Because I knew on a Saturday that Buddy wasn't on. And I know Buddy said nothing about me on Thursday. He passed out here anyway. So I was wondering, hey, what's, why is my phone going off like that? So of course picked up my phone, curious, curious as I am. And the message was like, have you seen this, this open letter yet? Uh, open letter. Of course, there was a link. So I checked out the link. And lo and behold, <laughs> hey, monsieur. Started reading this so-called open letter. And as I began reading, folks, the hogwash and the absolute diatribe of nonsense that I came across. And I say so with absolute no reservation. Absolute papi show. A guanom cafe papi show ekoi. This open letter, uh, uh, where is it there? Let me tell you here. Yeah, here it is. Open letter to Ambassador Daniela Tramaseri, the head of delegation of the European Union to Barbados, the Eastern Caribbean States, and CARICOM, CARIFORUM. And it is penned by no other than Peter Lansico, known to just about all and sundry as Pell. Now I want you to put that up full screen. Put up a photo of Pell there for me. Put up that photo of Pell. There, me Pell. Yeah, that's Pell, folks. Now you can split screen that for me, please. That is Pell who penned that letter to the EU. And folks, I think I might have an accident here tonight if I try to wepel. Eso wepel. 
I might have a, a malfunction here tonight if I am to endure reading through this load of hogwash. But the spade, I mean Pell, goes on to berate the government, berate the state of healthcare in St. Lucia. Okay, get rid of Pell. Get rid of Pell. I mean, I, 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 I don't know, folks. I don't know. You left to wonder, and I was left to wonder, where some of these people were in years gone by. It's like almost some sort of metamorphosis that they have suddenly become enlightened, that they've lost their Ray Charles shades to the real world, to reality of what's happening in St. Lucia. And all of a sudden, they know what's going on. All of a sudden, healthcare is in need in St. Lucia. As if we all just dropped out from outer space and suddenly discovered problems in St. Lucia. And folks, let me make it absolutely clear. I am in no way attempting to make anyone believe that the healthcare system in St. Lucia is perfect. But for a man like Pell to suddenly get a conscience really eats away at the core. And he's saying that healthcare is at its worst. Has this man been drinking? Is he smoking that funny grass? Healthcare is at its worst. Well, so let me deal with the OKEU first of all. Because healthcare in St. Lucia is encompassing, all encompassing, not just. Viewfort, or not just Castries, or Denry, or so for anything. Whole set is he about. And he talks about what the government is failing to do at OKEU, and that the situation in health is the worst that it has ever been. And how the government of St. Lucia is trying to, if, if I remember the, the drivel properly, Rob the people of proper health care or words to that effect. Zotsa Ali online. Anyway, I have my Creole bow tie and my mouchoir poche. See it? I should think come see this pitons la la, right? Demon time. You see that? I can still do a little something. But health care is so terrible that the government is corrupt. And it's corrupting, it's an open letter to, through the ambassador, to the taxpayers of the EU. Now, I will have you know that officials from the EU were down here recently. So, Pell, let's show a photo of Pell again. Pell seems to believe that he has a better grasp and he has more information than the persons, the officials who came down from the OK, from the EU, to see what's going on in St. Lucia. And his evaluation is better. And that he will dig out the eye, or the eyes of the government, and embarrass St. Lucia. And he claims, of course, he claims that he's a former ambassador. I just say, just say, former ambassador, Kevin Duvonzav. A shy former ambassador Kevin Duvan. A don yo po fe jeme fe an yen. Yo pa podwi an yen. Yo pa pote an yen sent li si. Yo pa jeme fe an yen. An non sent li si nou sa pale about. Me a poison. Tou bon man kon sa. Yo ni solution. Yo ni tout bagay pou di. About sent li si. About gouvernement sent li si. So, 
corruption and their friends and, and they want to privatize the OKEU. Folks, this is not anything, there's nothing further from the truth. This is absolutely not so. And you're left to wonder with the mountains of evidence out there, the information which has been put out is being clearly, deliberately ignored to push an agenda to embarrass the government, to embarrass St. Lucia. To what end? What end? So, the government wants to privatize OKEU. I don't know where the government has ever said so. In fact, the only aspect of privatization, if you will, connected to the OKEU is the Millennium Heights Medical Act or Millennium Heights Medical Complex Act. And who enacted that bit of legislation to enable this? For the management, management eh? of the OKEU? Hey, hey! St. Lucia Labour Party. The St. Lucia Labour Party. So, let us hear, because how the government is going about doing it is no good. So let us hear what the EU ambassador, get his name here because I, Mikhail Hassan, I believe his name is. Let me not get it wrong because I don't want to say that you wrong. No. Oi. EU ambassador, Mikhail Barford. And that was on his speech at Get this now, folks. The naming ceremony of the OKEU on the 21st of February, the day before elections, 2016. 1500 hours, 3 p.m. Lay Pali. Let us hear the pertinent part of the speech from EU ambassador. Uh, now, please, folks take a lot of time to bring you this evidence. We say evidencier. And as a result, I conduct or I give to you my analysis of the paralysis. Feel free to do the same. You may not agree. You may agree. You may have some different thoughts. But I would like you to listen very well to this excerpt from EU Ambassador Mikhail Barford on the 21st of February 2016 at a naming ceremony for the OKEU. And at the end of that, the hospital remained closed. So let's go to the videotape. Full screen, please. And start that from the beginning. The economic viability of the Owen King EU Hospital is central to the sustainability of the hospital and quality of the services available. The EU is currently supporting the government to develop strategies and policies for the sustainable financing of the health sector. And I know that the issue of economic viability of this hospital is foremost in the minds of bureaucrats and lay persons alike. The health sector is often viewed as a burden on a given country as it requires too much uh, from the government's treasury whilst um, contributing little to the fund. However, the quality of the facility, equipment and staff of the Owen King EU Hospital holds enormous potential for the hospital to earn considerable income and to be self-sustaining. I encourage the government to be creative in its approach to income generation of the hospital. Public-private partnerships, PPP, and service level agreements have proven successful in other countries to open up the healthcare market and make it attractive also for insurance companies and for tourists. In my view, whatever options government choose should not uh, add an undue burden or restrict access to secondary health services to those in most need. 
So, folks, you heard the EU ambassador, and he was very clear about how the hospital would go forward or could go forward. In fact, it sounded like advice to me in choosing not to add undue burden or restrict access to secondary health services to those most in need, of course. But he did say over, as well, the quality of the facility, equipment, and staff of the Owen King E Hospital holds enormous potential for the hospital to earn a considerable income and be self-sustaining, self-sustaining. That sounds like making money to me. It doesn't sound like charity. It doesn't sound like government throwing money into the hospital with no returns. I encourage the government, he goes on to say, I encourage the government to be creative in its approach to income generation of the hospital. You heard that? Public private partnerships and service level agreements have proven successful in other countries to open up the healthcare market and make it attractive also for insurance companies and tourists. Say Saidi. Say Saidi say Munla. Does that sound like the hospital will be operating as a charity? Or does it sound like the hospital operates a model of making money to pay for itself. But nevertheless, Pell, let's get a photo of Pell up again. Let's get a photo up of Pell. And Pell is complaining, he continues to complain about what's being done at the hospital. There's Pell, folks. There's Pell. This Saika Masse. Masav. Hey, DSH is looking for some. But anyway. <laughs> the OKEU and healthcare in St. Lucia is at the worst it's ever been. How he comes to that conclusion, I don't know. When the former administration was in office, OKEU was closed. The most that they had over there was the naming convention at which the EU ambassador that I just showed you spoke. Eglayofini mange pigs in a blanket. Eglayofini boy divé yo go ho ho ho. Ko ha yo de. Leofini tout ça, yo tout allé home yo. Okay yo West FM. So how can it be worst when it is now providing services now which were not being provided before? Dialysis Was dialysis being provided at the OKEU before? No, it wasn't. But we're going to move on. And Sotty, Castui, and this, and Abala, because that's the darling down there. Fix St. Jude's! St. Jude's will be fixed. Say, Sayope, St. Jude's will be fixed. What we know for sure is that under the former SLP administration, St. Jude's was not fixed. It was not finished. That we know for sure. What we do know is that this current administration is doing and moving in the right direction to get St. Jude's completed. But I have a warning for this government. I'm telling you, folks, and many of you may agree with this warning to the government. And it's with regard to the OKEU hospital. And it is with regard to St. Jude's Hospital that these hospitals have to be finished fully operational before elections. 
Many St. Lucians are calling for that. And I am calling for it again tonight on keeping it real because I keep it real. And Prime Minister Alan Chastney, this goes out directly to you and your cabinet of ministers that you must finish St. Jude's and have the OKU fully functional by elections no later than at least a month before election. Please make a this up. And this is Creole Heritage Month, like June Creole Kavin Dimash. Make a this up. Kalte Kuada Munkai Hen, election sala, l'hôpital la bise, over. They must keep it open because of the, 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 the collapses we will have after the results of the next elections. If anything, the hospitals must be open, ready and waiting to Adam Monkey Kai and Febles. That's right. And you all know who get in the licks. Magade Madi. Think about it for yourself. You make your keep it real to yourself. Prime Minister Alan Shasney. Yeah. So I before I get any further south than castries sometime last year philip j pierre the leader of the opposition so philip j pierre and it was all on the news you could go back and google or call sent in a petition to the government with 11,484 signatures. 11,484 signatures in a letter dated the 12th of March 2018. And he had a tea with petition sala and the response to this submission was rather interesting rather interesting and here's the response and of course again listen to it well folks I acknowledge receipt of your letter dated the 12th of March 2018, which accompanied the submission of a petition for the reopening of St. Jude Hospital with a total of 11,484 signatures. We won't even talk about those signatures. As you are undoubtedly aware, the St. Jude Hospital endured the entire term in office of your SLP administration from 2011 to 2016. During that time, you were, offered, you were afforded multiple opportunities to accomplish the very same demands which you now make. In fact, your administration promised the people of St. Lucia on numerous occasions that St. Jude Hospital was soon to be reopened and would be a state-of-the-art facility. Lamentably, you failed to deliver on your promise each and every one of those times. Clearly, your administration faced insurmountable challenges during your time in office, which must have given you a clear view of exactly what the impediments were to the accomplishment of the very task which you now demand of this administration. As you are aware, this administration has been in office for less than two years, and your demands for delivery in this short period of time clearly indicate your confidence in our ability to perform better than you did in almost five years. Having been at the helm of government during your term of office, it would be educational if you would share your thoughts on the reasons why St. Jude Hospital was unable to be reopened when you had every opportunity to do so. You evidently are aware that during the United Workers' Party administration, which preceded your 2011 to 2016 term, much pressure was brought to bear on the Stevenson King administration to complete 
the works less than one year after the St. Jude Hospital fire. With regard to the five areas of concern to the signatories to the petition, I can state categorically that the St. Jude Hospital construction as it stands will not be demolished. Two, that the government of St. Lucia will commence work on the hospital as soon as financially and logistically prudent. Three, the hospital will be completed in the shortest possible time frame on recommencement. Four, all mechanisms will be put in place for its commissioning almost immediately on completion. Five, measures have been taken and are being taken to improve safety of staff and patients at the George Odlum Stadium while awaiting the completion of the St. Jude Hospital reconstruction. I wish to give you and all St. Lucians every assurance that my administration is acutely aware of the critical situation we currently face with St. Jude Hospital and healthcare in St. Lucia, and that we intend to expend all necessary corrective measures as soon as financially and logistically possible. It is our unwavering commitment to provide world-class health care to all St. Lucians. And of course, Prime Minister Alan Chastney. But I have some more for you folks. I have some more. We'll keep it real here tonight. Let's keep it real. Talk about healthcare being the worst that it has ever been. And of course, the old SLP machinery has been trying to repeat and repeat and repeat. Come see the St. Lucien deck deck, you know? Come see the tet your flow. But let me tell you what Pell, let's see Pell again, what Pell considers to be the worst state of healthcare in St. Lucia ever. Now, what I am about, you could take Pell off there now. What I am about to bring to your attention, folks, is, there we go, I too, wave him away there. Like a magician, abracadabra. Mm. What I am about to read out here to you folks is what did not exist during the SLP administration while St. Jude's was housed and at the George Odlum Stadium in Viewfort. So the word worst ever, the words or worst, have a specific meaning. It cannot be better and you say it's worse. Then say abayo kabwe. Let's go again. At St. Jude's in Viewfort, at the George Odlum Stadium, since elections 2016, there is an installed and functional, a new GE X-ray machine. There is a brand new ultrasound for ER and it works it operates on the beds, uh, bedside so they can wheel it around. There is a FAST, and that is an abbreviation for focused assessment with sonography in trauma. S sonogram! And it's for bedside usage again. And it provides services for echocardiography, ident identifying pneumothorax for identifying pneumonia pericardial and pleural effusion, soft tissue scanning, abscess, cellulitis, foreign bodies. There's venous Doppler, DVT, cardiac contractility, Mama. renal stones, hydrof hy hydronephrosis. It's not my fault, you know. It's not my fault. I'm keeping it real. I can't pronounce all these words there. My doctor. The number of dialysis machines, folks, listen to this. Major in St. Lucia. There was so much noise. Let me remind you, keeping it real, mug is almost here. And as usual, mm, 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 mm. anything you put in it tastes 10 times better. Jig glow. Jig glow. Plume, and of course, you can see 
The barcode keeping it real, right down there in the corner. <laughs> Cutting edge, right there. I'm telling you, keeping it real, not playing. Put on your scanner on your phone and scan that QR code. Information, email address, Facebook page, tout bagay. Ek si scan li top vit, fou nou ka je change ka upgrade. That's right. That's right, folks. So, the number of dialysis machines were increased from five. Oh, hold on. Was increased by five. It was previously seven. So, now you have 12 dialysis machines at St. Jude's. An increase of almost double. Say it in so, Pell. And that was able to reduce the waiting list from 32 to 18. That is significant. And you're telling me that healthcare in St. Lucia is worse? Uh, what kind of maths is that? That's Pell maths. So, so, ski sao ka shashe ek Pell la. Patat. What kind of mathematics is that? Worse. It's better, but it's worse. You're thinking in reverse. The beds at St. Jude have been replaced. 30 so far. All 70 will be replaced by the end of this year, 2019. The side tables for the beds to be replaced by year end. Half have been completed, have been changed out so far. All carpeting in the wards have been replaced. All partitions and dividers between beds have been replaced. The staff, which was at 350, is now 380. It's worse. It's worse. New measures have been put in place. Listen to this. One of the bins of healthcare in St. Lucia is people paying for the services rendered. And collection payments have now increased from almost zero at St. Jude. Zero collections of what was owed to two million dollars right. That's right now. That sounds worse to you? Pell. Does that sound worse to you? As a result, folks, hold on. Here's the good news. And there were indicators to that. Messe Buksala Pakadiusa. They will concentrate on spreading, I'll say it tonight, false lies. Kakaganda. That's what they're pushing out there. Kakaganda. Oh my gosh, people are dying. You don't have no shame. I mean, sully in the name of your country. Putting that out there. There was absolutely no intention, as far as I'm concerned, by Pell. To send any letter to any EU. That was the ploy. Because if he was a diplomat, like he said, like he says, like the other diplomats, who have some of the biggest question marks over their heads. If he was a diplomat, a properly accomplished diplomat, and not a failure, how many times you wanted to run Central Castries? Until huh? Mapubai. Huh? Why were you overlooked? Why were you passed over? I, I'm just asking a question. I'm sure lots of people are asking. Who tell me accomplish? Who say to take diplomat? Who parfait? Who vle kou yanko? I hear through the grip vine. Well, nous pas grip sent li nan grips vie fo kouma. I hear it through the passion fruit vine. Who vle kou election yanko? What you bring into the table? Tsao fella ou te Cuba? How poté? How poté? Anything? Anything? Write an open letter to me. Pas la bêtise de moi. I mean, solutions. What would you want by that? 2,000 or how many thousand words? Moi, je vais te dire Bible. Moi, je vais te dire Bible. Si, je vais te dire Bible. Ouais, here it is. Gap page qui là. Gapage qui là. Gapage qui là. Gapage qui là. Gapage qui là. Ou quoi si pièce on n'en baye ça, yon kai gaspillé tant yon lisa? Seriously? Seriously? You know, 
Don't do magic with yourself, man. Don't do magic with yourself. Don't do magic with yourself. I mean, I don't know why I printed this thing. This is not even worth printing. And the diatribe, the 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 VA, the old washed up revolutionary. That's right, washed up revolutionary language. Say by say bugla vie communist. Calde language sa ki an sa. Betis, papi show. You actually took time out. You wasted your life. However, when did they point about day more for week we say? Day more. Waste of time. But here's a little one I have for you here, folks. Because of the streamlining or the more efficient operations of the OKEU. Because of that. For the first time ever in St. Lucia, history was made at St. Jude's Hospital where they were able to purchase for the first time their own ambulance without the aid of government or any other funding agency or donor agency. Well done, St. Jude's Hospital. And you telling me that things worse in St. Lucia than it was before? The worst ever? Upa we say Blabuka by hell. So let's have a look at some of those photos, full screen, of the ambulance which was purchased by St. Jude's Hospital. Their own money, no donation, no dada. Look at that, folks. Outfitted, equipped with what's needed in the South. St. Jude Hospital paying for their own ambulance. And you tell me that things are worse? I think things are better, way better than they were before. Look at that. St. Jude's Hospital without government assistance. So, so I try I tell mom, I tell my mal. Ipafi mal, imal. By Telma Mal, St. Jude's Hospital today, first time ever, is able to purchase their own ambulance in Viewfort. But Bagai Pli Mal, there are more, more dialysis machines at the OKEU, almost double, me Bagai Pli Mal. There's a new GE X ray machine at St. Jude's, but healthcare is the worst it's ever been in St. Lucia. There's a brand new ultrasound which can be used bedside and around the hospital. Was not there before. Brand new! But you have the audacity and the gall to say healthcare is at its worst. Upa weu. National word to you, man! National word! National word! And, you know. <laughs> You, you, you see this, eh? This. Nothing else to this than to be flushed down the drain. There it is. Waste of time. Flush it away. Flush it twice to make sure that it goes down. There it is. Wasting people time. Embarrassment to your country. It's a shame. Diplomat. A diplomat. Nonsense. Flush that away, man disgrace as far as I'm concerned folks on that note right now with the magic and what I tell you don't do magic with yourself because people take you for magic don't do magic with yourself man. on that note we'll take a break and we'll be right back after these words Good. Well, welcome back, folks. Welcome back. Just trying to get some papers sorted out here because it's going to be hot this time around. Now, I want to get to something here. Well, before we get to that, I got a message. Got a message here. 
ask a question. I'm going to read it directly from here for you, folks. It's a little more interactive, you know, with the viewers. Got a message and says to ask, ask about, uh, somebody wants to know what channel. Ask about the $100,000 he was going to raise for the victims of the fire or whatever he said he was going to raise. What happened to that? Or whatever it was he was going to raise. He said he started off with $2 or something of the sort. What, what happened to that? People just asking, you know. St. Lucians are curious people. They want to know. So now I'm changing gears a little bit here, folks. Changing gears. And of course, <laughs> you know why people must do this thing? The constant lies. The constant propaganda at everything the government tries to do for St. Lucia. We had some ambitious, hard-working hard working St. Lucians who decided to get into horse grooming and they were trained through NAP, National Apprenticeship Program, in order that they would become employed at the DSH racetrack, taking care of the horses. By the way, for those of you who may be un have been under a rock and didn't know that 40 horses arrived in Viewfort on Saturday afternoon on a jumbo jet a DC-10 from Florida and made their way under the guide of our very own St. Lucians, a large number of them who were trained, to the stables at the racetrack. And the first race ever at that racetrack will be held on National Day, December the 13th of this year. And I can tell you for sure, based on the feedback I'm getting from my friends in Florida, who are involved with horse racing and the horse racing industry, that there has been and continues to be quite a buzz about what is happening here in St. Lucia. And many people are interested in coming down to see what it's all about, to see how international St. Lucia has become as far as that's concerned. But there are those out there who don't care who they besmirch, who they give mepui, who they discourage, what black eyes they give St. Lucia, how they sabotage St. Lucia's name, whether it be here in St. Lucia, whether it be in the region or internationally. Because now is the time of the internet. This is the times we live in. You put something out there, it's there forever, and everybody, doesn't matter whether you're in St. Lucia or not, will see it. So, I cannot believe that any of these lies and propaganda are accidental. They are deliberate, folks. They are deliberate, and we must condemn this nonsense. We must condemn it. This thing of writing letters writing these dirty letters you know Onesile is the one who said these upcoming elections and they're calling it oh here's elections soon around the corner I don't know what planet they're on we have over a year and a half to go yeah nine months constitutionally due these coming elections will be the nastiest that is words Nastiest. And you can change nastiest and say dirtiest in Mbaila in the context. So I want to ask Onesile whether that letter by Pell, put up his photo again. Whether the open letter, the so-called open letter, Mipel, 
whether the so-called open letter is what he was talking about as the nastiest elections come in because many people consider including myself that the SLP never really got over the elections loss and decided that from June the 6th 2016 that is the same old khaki pants again Atwe Adai so is the letter that Philip J. Pierre wrote to the British High Commission asking them not to approve Guy Mayer's Hopefully my point pulled by is too. Ako? I've read it a number of times. He wrote that letter to them, knowing very well it would be sent to head office in England. Philip JP and the opposition, because it says that it was CC'd to all members of opposition. I haven't heard any of them say they don't agree with it. And even if they did, they subscribe to it. Huh? Huh? Anybody disagreed? That was a dirty letter. That's local politics. The other day in the house, who was it? Onesi Leo, whoever it was, said, or oh, Philip J.P., one of them. Keep local politics local. That is keeping local politics local. Where you, in, in essence, write to the British government and tell them not to approve the appointment of Guy Mayers as St. Lucia's High Commissioner in London. Despicable. Is that the nastiness you were talking about, Onesile? Everything the government does. St. Lucia's boring. Vat Cachuelo businesses closing. Left, right and center. Don't even talk about Viewfort, the ghost town. The only thing they were missing was tumbleweed. If you don't know what tumbleweed is, look it up. Those of you who watch enough westerns back in the day know what tumbleweed, what tumbleweed is. Huh? Businesses closing left, right and center. And guess what? The irony of it all, the irony of it all is one of the businesses in, in Viewfort, down south, one of them is one of the biggest benefactors to the DSH horse race track. Lord Joram with a new hand, you go check. Can you believe that? Detractors of the government, things rough, they balling. You take Jikni Munla, Katwa Vaila, Yola Jeyo. Hmm, let's not get into that. Let's not, go. according to someone I know. Don't go there. Don't go there. So what's happening? What's happening in the South? These young men deciding not to get into drugs, not to get into crime, not to run afoul of the law, to do what we want all our young people to do to become productive, to learn a trade, go to school, fair bagay, fair by echo. We complain about what's happening with crime. We complain about what's happening socially. But some ignoramuses will go out there and lie and say that the horse groomers, they are only lame weak. They went to the US to train. And some of them didn't even come back, your pavier liar that's not true folks nobody was trained out of St. Lucia all the horse groomers at DSH were trained through a NAP program National Apprenticeship Program the advertisements were out there for young people in the south and elsewhere in St. Lucia who wanted to be horse groomers don't let your memories be so shallow and so, so forgetful And then now, you have young people who want to be gainfully employed, lawfully employed, legally employed. And you will have people in the House of Assembly and out on political platforms 
who will say, is it all that St. Lucian's a wolf to pick up horse? Shh, don't say it. Is that what our St. Lucian's a wolf? So I want to know, I want to know what pig farmer's picking up. If it's sugar, the pig's dropping. That's what you have to, you see, you have to think out of the box because these, these jokers, they want to keep your mind in a box that you can't think straight. Let me calm down here a little bit. Mm, mm, mm. Keeping it real mug. Ten times better, whatever you put in there. Ten times better. They'll be here soon, folks. What happened to pig farmers? What happened to chicken farmers? What happened to the farmers who have cows? And even talking about the slaughterhouse or whatever, Leo Treola, Kisaka Desan, Kisayo Nipuamase. Shh. It's not sugar. National word to you. National word. It's not sugar. So what are you saying? That anyone having to pick up after animals, Upavoye? they're not good enough because if that's the case then I guess you'd encourage nobody to look for a job picking up garbage hmm? garbage has much more in there smells much worse do you have a problem with people working as garbage men or garbage women or like they say uh, give it the right title garbologists you all have a problem with that? So I want to set the record straight that none of the horse groomers, because, you know, you have people looking at our young people and wondering whether they can be trusted. They all pass with flying colors because they're passionate, they're young people full of energy in St. Lucia, and they're doing the right thing. Bravo to them! Congratulations to them because they are being productive members of society and if anything I'm sure every single one of them and ask a certain person ask a certain person that every single one of them would prefer to be at the DSS racetrack even if it's shh they have to pick up rather than being at Borderley say it and so where would you prefer to be at the DSH racetrack or at Borderley. You see, folks, you just have to think a little differently, you know. Don't let people manipulate you, you know, manipulate you. Kuyenel. You know, malmene sevelu. You know? When you go to the supermarket, have a question. When you go to the supermarket, when you get to the cashier, does she ask you where you work? Does she ask you if you're working with horses? Or whether you're an accountant. As Christmas come in there, you think you care if you get a job at DSH for you to buy some new things for your kid? Or for your girlfriend? Or, I mean, of course, if you want to get a keeping it real mug, you think it bothers you? You know, I'm really disheartened by this nonsense. But it shows again and again and again that the opposition has absolutely no intention of accepting any response, any response at all that the government gives. It doesn't matter what explanation you give, their intention from the get-go is not to accept any explanation or response to the questions that they ask. And again today, say Munla, Jodia, Jodia, the SLP has been asking, well, from Saturday, eh? and even before that, Yojik di Chasne Ashte Shuval, 7 million, or whatever the story was, whatever, so many wild figures floating around there with the Hakalaks. 
The Hakalaks, where are they tonight? The Hakalaks on the internet. Shasne went and buy how many horses coming down. Peace yourself. Puko Shuval. Shuval obliged this and said, Lisi, no hasafsa. We've known this for years. That horses were coming down. So call Lea Puse Kusla Viefo Kavin Tlipwe. Yoslav Shuval Kaidesan. Yoslav Shuval Kaidesan. So Sayokadi, what are they saying? They know the horses are coming. Moi ça va dans autre pas parler pas toi là son il parler anglais tout It's almost the time for the race December the 13th the horses have to get down here they have to be acclimatized you need to fait tout bay yo massage marcher bagay ex ce cheval là Comment c'est cou oui bagay So start spreading the rumors man start spreading the rumors Chasne by horses 7 million or how many million horses coming down you know it's just like the guy who goes to bed every night and he says tomorrow it's going to rain he knows nothing about the weather you know but every night he goes to bed and predicts tomorrow it's going to rain so you telling me tomorrow when he wakes up and it rains he's a meteorologist he knows anything about the weather no he doesn't. So peace dot the show. Ki sa o kwe te kai ku i DSH. Maniku. Horses have to come down. Send lisi pan for a bread. Send lisi pan i for a pe. Not slice, not local bread. Oh yeah, for a bread. Shasne by horse. Hey, hey, come on. Some people fall for this foolishness. Chasne by horse. Make information on Ipusa. Where's the bill? Where's the what? Kikote yashte. No supporting evidence. Jessica. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Jessica to sell. Chasne yashte. A guy te fache. Guy te fache on quiz point. C'est ça yodi. I mean, nothing further from the truth. So now, hold on now. Hold on now. The accusation horses were bought with taxpayers' money. So now the horses get here. The government, Nicole McDonald, puts out a statement decrying, denying, knocking it away. It's like Betty's man. It's nothing there. It's all fake news, propaganda, kakaganda. And you know what? Now that the government has come out and said, no, that's not true at all. You change. So today now, SLP coming out. You, you see, same thing I say, they have absolutely no intention of accepting any explanation. Ek yo kai just change question. Ek change de power la den, de mo. Ek se mem bai la. Calling on the Alan Chastain administration for full disclosure. Well, hold on, folks. There's two parties involved there. There's the government of St. Lucia and there's the DSH racetrack. The government has said in their press release yesterday that the government has spent no money in purchasing horses, has not been involved, did not procure, didn't put one set, katsu, desu, sengo, oh yeah, penny, hepni, nothing, nothing. The government put nothing in the horses. After all, say Munla, what is the most logical thing to do? You ask the next party. Made DSH. Zokni tut reporters, zot, zot jikni reporters ka di. You say political actors. Ebe act. I maje made sosla. I ma go ask them. So if you ask me a question, and there are two parties involved and I say I know nothing about it I didn't have anything to do with it you're going to continue and ask me the same question again you go ask the other party who's involved isn't that logical 
T t I mean seriously. Is it not logical? So here it is. Accordingly, the St. Lucia Labour Party seeks answers to the following. If the government did not purchase the horses, they go for more just do, sir, and you agreeing. If what is causing your doubt, the government said they did not. If the government did not purchase the horses, were they purchased by Mr. T. Rocking? Ebe I money T. Rocking. I money T. O. Through the Royal St. Lucia Turf Club. So you all know there's a Royal St. Lucia Turf Club. Ebe I money you. I money you. If the answer is in the affirmative, does the purchase form part of the arrangement earlier announced by the Prime Minister in a televised interview? <laughs> Hogwash, according to somebody, flashing mirrors at Becky Saikadi. Who is currently responsible for the maintenance and upkeep of the horses? Mais le gouvernement a dit ça longtemps, pas jodi à tout seul, pas si même pas si tout seul, pas samedi tout seul. The racetrack, the racetrack, DSH racetrack, Royal St. Lucia Turf Club. But folks, a lot low magie encore. This, this needs to be flushed. It's an insult to the intelligence of St. Lucia. Flush that. More nonsense again. It is an insult to the intelligence of St. Lucia. That's what it is. That's what it deserves. That's what it is. Stop insulting the intelligence of St. Lucians. This is becoming ridiculous and it's a farce. All of you. It's a farce now. And St. Lucians are growing weary, tired, huh? weary of the nonsense. And just for a matter of fact, for those of you who may not have heard, 40 horses came down on that flight. These horses were brought down to participate and to be part of the DSH racehorse track, DSH race track. They were brought down by the Royal St. Lucia Turf Club. Head the name, Royal St. Lucia Turf Club. XC SLPR power coupon, 90 by Dot coupon, Royal St. Lucia Turf Club. As a matter of fact, tomorrow morning, the press has been invited at 10 a.m. Royal St. Lucia Turf Club, the DSH race track, right down there in Viewfort. Have a press conference and answer all the questions. So you all can start WhatsApping, you know, WhatsApping in the background for your money question you. WhatsApp them the questions because they've made themselves available. You could get answers to all the questions about the racetrack, how long it is. But si you take drive by bon atem, I tell like Russell, and I gave that information. Me ma fe tout to avise out by zot. I know y'all will listen. I know. Ask those questions tomorrow. How wide it is. How banked the corners are. How many horses can ride abreast. Hmm? What the prize is going to be for the top. The Pitons Cup race. Has the track been accredited? Persons or, or officials from which international horse racing agencies have come down to have a look at the track. What officials from the region came down to have a look at the track? And what was overall the conclusion about the track? You want to ask them that? No! That's too easy. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. International standard. International. The best racetrack in this region. The DSH racetrack. And all of this will enhance St. Lucia's image. The Pitons, the Sulphur Springs, our lovely beaches, our lovely people, our hospitality. 
number one honeymoon destination in the world number one hotels by far four star five star logic need 25 star hotel st lisi and the racetrack will pull in another set of visitors see monka bet as a racetrack the people who bet the people who are attracted to that spot see for 25 cents you near mm-hmm mm-hmm and folks i'm telling you you have to experience it for yourself december the 13th make your way down to the dsh racetrack to see for yourself and they're asking a lot of questions about that road the road take taxpayers money or whatever and build road there for racetrack i come in to tell you i come in down to talk to you right after the break i'll tell you the story with that road right back get it going quickly come right back here i'll be waiting thank you very much thank you for keeping it real you know that's the strange thing because when you sully the image of saint lucia when you scare investors away when you put all sorts of negative information out there lies and propaganda when you keep the economy from growing and when things get bad in saint lucia and you're saying that you want to take up the helm of governance in this country exactly. if, if, if you get into office Another you don't think you will inherit exactly what you created? Exactly. And another note. Yes. You need the what you were saying about St. Jude's. I have never heard that on the news. You all need to put it out there. The different things that, 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 that that's taking place at St. Jude's, like the ambulance, the different machines and different things. Yes. You all need to put it out there. Yes. Thank you, Carla. Thank you very much. Thanks for keeping it real. But you see, again, you have to... Look at the fork tongues. The SLP said that healthcare was their priority. Getting St. Jude's built and operational was their priority. That they would do everything it took to get St. Jude's built in their term of office. That's what they campaigned on. St. Jude's Hospital was a major, major campaign point against the Stevenson King administration. But yet still, it was their priority they gave multiple dates for opening. Ask Alvina Reynolds about that. Kenny Anthony gave multiple values of ever-increasing amount of how much it would take from 25 million to 40 to 60 to 135 million or 120, whatever he said. And he said, you know, but you know what? It will be money well spent. It will be worth it. We would have a state-of-the-art hospital. But you know what they did? They said it would be ready by November. Elections were not due before November. But they call elections early. But delivering the hospital was their priority. But I want to leave you with that photo there, folks. Today, monumental. The signing and the photo op with Carnival, Cruise Lines, MSC, Prime Minister Alan Chastney, Minister of Tourism, Dominic Fede. There we go. Put that full screen, please. View Fort. It's your time. The new frontier. Exotanly. History in the making there. Home port in View Fort. Those of you who are watching, who have not taken the opportunity or looked into getting trained for something in the South, NAP, the National Apprenticeship Program, is waiting for your calls. They're waiting. History in the making there, folks, and I'm sure you will hear lots more about the home port in the South, and I'm telling you all that the South is taking off. It's clear. It's clear. The government has defined the priorities. St. Jude's Hospital is underway, folks. Don't listen to the... The propaganda, the kakaganda, it's on the way. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you folks, December the 13th, let me see you down there in the south because I've always planned 
to be there and if I be granted the breath to be there on this planet, I will be there. That's it for tonight, folks. Thank you so much for being with me tonight, for tuning in. And I'd um, like to thank you, of course, for being the fans that you are. You can take that photo down. Thank you for being the fans that you have continued to be for quite a while. Another episode of Keeping It Real. Join me next week at this same time, 8.30 p.m. right here. No fluff, no bluff. I'm Norbert Williams. Good night. <laughs>